Hello and welcome to another Leak Code video. Today we're going to be doing problem number 1268, Search Suggestion System. And so this problem is pretty straightforward. You're given an array of words and a search word, and then you have to go through the search word letter by letter to get words that have the same prefix. And if there's multiple words with the same prefix, then you need to return them in alphabetical order. You would only want three. And so let's actually show how this would look real quick. It's a little bigger. Perfect. So we have mobile, and I'm actually going to um, print the sorted words because we are going to have to sort this. So monitor, mouse, mouse pad. Okay. And so we are looking for the word mouse. I can actually write it here. It's pretty bad. So, okay. And so what we need to do is we need to actually go prefix by prefix for this word. And then we need to figure out what are the words that match with that. And so let's actually do that. So for example, we start with this M and we say, okay, what are the words that have a prefix of M? Well, it's actually every single word. So then for M, you would just return the first three words that match with, with that. And so it's going to be this. Now we go to the next letter. So we go to the O and then now our word has to start with M O. So what are the words there? Well, it's every single word again. So we would return the exact same three words, right? Okay. Now we go to the U, which is this color? Or sorry, yeah, we go to the U. And now what are the words that start with M-O-U? Well, it's actually only these two words. So we would only return these two words. And then for S and E, it's going to be these two words again and again. And so you can see that in the output, it is... Uh, it is mobile money pot monitor for the first two. And then for the last three, it's mouse mouse pad. And then for the second example, Havana, the only word we have is Havana and the search word is Havana. So for every single iteration, we're just going to return Havana. That's pretty straightforward. So there's a couple ways you could do this problem, but uh, let me actually do this. Yeah. So there's a couple ways you could do this problem. You could do it with a try because and when what you could do with the try is you could put all these words into a try and then you could do like a search at the prefix you're currently at for the first three words. But the annoying thing about that is usually for a try, you want to know exactly what word you're searching for as opposed to just the first three words. So we're not going to use a try and you could do a binary search and the binary search would pretty much be sort the words and then have like a, have a pointer to where the first possible word where the prefix could be. So for example, for M here, you would just say like, okay, I need, I need the first word starting with them. So it's going to be like here. And then you'd have to manually search through these words to make sure that the prefix actually is correct. But the problem with that implementation is this word can actually get really long. I think this word can be like a thousand characters. And then you can't just search for the exact letter you need. You need to search for the exact word. Cause like there could be some word like niece or something at the end, or it could be like, like, let's say you have some big word. Let's say your word is like octopus or, you know, or whatever, like, Let's say your word is like a bunch of octopus, right? So it's like, it's like this, let's say this is the word you're looking for. And then you're at like this last prefix and the word over here almost matches at the end, but then it doesn't. So then you would have to search through all of these letters for every, for like every word. And you'd have to check them all the time. And so that's actually gonna get really expensive, even though the binary search is pretty fast. So we're going to want an algorithm that we can just search for an exact letter for and not have to go through the entire word searching for it. Well, because yeah, for, for a big word, big prefixes are going to be expensive. Obviously, if you're looking for like something like this, it's cheap, but once the word gets really big, it's going to be really expensive. So we're actually going to do a two pointer technique here. And I just wanted to show this because this is pretty rare for these word, word search things. Usually you use some kind of a try or binary, or binary search or something, but this is kind of like a clever way of doing it. And so you have a left and right pointer. They're going to start at the they're going to start at like the left and the right of the entire array. And what we're actually going to do is we are going to, for every single prefix, we're going to see if we can decrement the left and the right pointer. So like we're going to have this M and we're going to say, okay, let's go to where the left pointer is and let's just check the word at only the letter we care about. And then if that letter is either out of bounds, right? So like, let's say we have a word like this, let's say we have this octopus thing, right? And our prefix is actually at this S but our word is octa like this or something, right? Octopa. Then we would say, okay, misspelled that. So let's say we're just, yeah, octopa. Okay. 
and we're looking for octopus. So we're looking for this letter S, but this letter S is too big. So if the word is too big, that means that it can't be the word we're looking for. And so we're going to have to keep shrinking our window. So if the word that we're looking for is too big or if the letter doesn't match, right? So for example, if this was octopus A or something and we're looking for octopus, then the letter wouldn't match either. So if the word is too big or the letter doesn't match, then we're going to shrink our window and we're actually going to shrink our window at every pre prefix to make sure that the words in the window are all all have that prefix and then we can easily just take the first three words in there then we don't have to actually check for the entire string so let's show you how that's going to look like right so for this m for example we're going to check for the left for the first word and this is the, keep in mind this is sorted so because it's sorted if we just shrink the left and the right then the stuff in the middle has to match the criteria right so like for the first word if the first word starts with an m and then the last word starts with them then everything in between has to start with an m as well so we are going to say, okay, let's, let's check starting from the first word for everything that starts with M and remember we have to check for the one letter. So we are only checking for this letter. And then if it doesn't, then we're going to shrink our window. So here it does start with M and here it does start with M. So we leave our window alone. Now we go to the next letter and then same thing. We go to, we go to this index and we check in the left. Does it start with a zero or with a note? Yes, it does. So we can leave that alone. The right, it does. And then once again, you can see that. If, if if the word on the right starts with MO and the word on the left starts with MO, everything in between has to start with MO because it's the words are sorted in ascending order. And so that's why this is like a clever trick you can use. So now we go to the U and we do the same thing. We check just the third letter because we know the first two are, are good. So we just check the third letter and we say, okay, does that start with a U? No, it does not. Okay, does that start with a U? No, it does not. Does that start with a U? No, it does not. Does that start with a U? Yes, it does. So we actually move our left over here now. And so this is our new sliding window. Now we check the right. Does this word start with a U? Yes, it does. Okay, so we can leave that. And then these are our words now. And the nice thing about this is if your sliding window is ever out of bounds, like let's say you just don't have any words. Let's say you're looking for M-O-Z, let's say. Then you're going to keep moving your left. And then your left is going to be like, like, let's say this right is at index four and this left is at index five. We can just check at the end. We can just say like when we're actually getting the words, we can just say, let's get the words until left is greater than right. So if left is greater than right, right away, we're just not going to have any words. And we're not doing repeated work. This is a sliding window. So if so, if our sliding window is out of bounds at some point, it will just do nothing for the rest of the uh, the rest of the code, because we're always going to check if left is greater than right. But anyway, so. So for our first two, for our M and M O, for our M and M O, these were our three words, right? So let me actually draw the colors here to make it more sense. So when we did the M, these are our three words. When we did the M O, these were our three words. Now for the M O U, this is the only words we have. Now we go to the next letter. Let's make it maybe brown. So we check this letter. And once again, we're only checking one letter, which saves us a ton of time because a string can be a thousand letters, so it's not negligible. So now we check for this S. For the left side, is there an S? Yes, there is. Is there an S for the right side? Yes, there is, right? It is there. So we don't have to make our sliding window any smaller. So then we just take the words in our sliding window. And now finally we have the last letter and we see if we need to shrink our sliding window again. So this does have an E uh, and this has an E as well. So we don't need the shrink or sliding window and we get this. And yeah, so the nice thing about this is if we ne if we ever don't have something, then it, then our L will be to the right of the R. It'll be over here. So we will never have to do anything. And this is going to be, if you think about it, worst case scenario, we're going to shrink it at big O of N time. So now a worst case scenario, we are doing big O of N, you know, total shrink. So we are only traversing the list once and all we are doing is to, to check if we need to move the left or the right is big O of one, which is really cheap, right? Like we only check one character and that's the most important thing. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We're gonna have a sliding window. We're gonna check letter by letter by letter. And we are gonna have a few cases where either the letter is out of bounds, in which case we need to move our sliding window or if our letters don't match. And they're guaranteed to be like, if L is the smallest and R is the biggest, we don't really need to check is it greater or less than or whatever. We can just keep shrinking it. It doesn't matter. And so let's code that up. 
So we're going to have the sliding window, right? So we're going to have a left and a right. And they're going to start zero and a length of products. Minus one. Now remember, we do need to sort the products. Now it's pretty straightforward. We're going to go character by character in search word. So, and we also need the index as well. So for I care. So we're going to use an enumerate here. And you can enumerate a string. So. And so what are we doing? Remember, we have a while loop for the left and we have a while loop for the right. And we need to keep shrinking the left and we need to keep shrinking the right. So while left is less than or equal to right, if it's already greater than, we don't need to do anything. So we need to have an and here. And then we have two cases, right? So if uh, length of products i is less than i plus 1, right? So for example, if our index at the letter we need where we care about is two, then the word that we're searching for can't be if the word. So the, remember the indexes are zero index, right? So if we have like this, this would be index zero, index one, index two. So if we're looking for this t, then this word, if this word is shorter than three characters, then that's not going to work. So this is going to be if length products i is less than i plus one, then we have another case, or the letters don't match, right? So products. And actually, this shouldn't be products i, this should be products left i, right? Because it's the word at left, but then we also need the exact letter we're looking for. So products left i does not match the current letter we have. And the current letter we have is the character. So if that's the case, then we're going to shrink our sliding window to the right. That's going to be left plus equals 1. Now we have this, uh, so this happens. Okay, so we can pretty much copy this code and change it a little bit for the right side. So it's going to be while right is greater than or equal to left and length products right, same thing. And yeah, like I said, we don't really need to check if it's less than or whatever. We're just going to keep shrinking our sliding window to make sure the stuff in there is, works. So we can just use a not equal in this. So now we need to shrink to the left, so it's going to be right, minus equals 1. Now we also need a result here, and then we also need one other thing. We need the temporary array to store the characters from our current iterations, right? So let's just call that cur characters or something, right? Because like if we're at index, if we're at the letter M, we need, you know, like these three, these three characters. So we need to store those and then we need to put those into the result. So we can just make it an empty array. Then we just simply loop through three characters and we're guaranteed uh, that as long as like there are characters in between the left and the right, either there aren't any, there aren't any letters. So like if the left is greater than the right, then there's nothing. But if the left is less than the right, anything in anything in between those two indices is a valid prefix that we can use. So we can just do for i and uh, we don't want to use i, maybe we want to use like index instead here in range. And we're just going to use three because we only need three characters. So if left plus index is less than or equal to right, right? We just have to make sure like, is this a valid index? And so left plus zero is going to be zero and so on. So for example, if we have three words in here, let's say, so this would be index zero, one, two, let's say. So this is the left, this is the right. And so left would be zero, right it would be two. So you would do like zero plus zero, zero plus one, zero plus two. And those would all be valid if, if you did have three. And and these these numbers can be whatever, right? So if this was 20 and 22, it would still work. So, but yeah, but if you did have something that, you know, didn't have enough characters, like let's say you only had 21 here, then left is 21 and right is also 21. So this is left, this is right. And then, so left plus zero, uh, left plus zero would be less than right, but left plus one would not be. And so this is just like a, a kind of clever way to make sure that your your stuff is in bounds. Okay, so if that's the case, then we need to add our uh, word to the cur character. So cur cares dot append products. Uh, left plus index. Okay, so we append it, 
And then at the end of the loop, whatever we have in the array, even if it's an empty array, we need to append it to the result. So res.append characters. Now we just simply return result. And yeah, so if our left is greater than right at some point, like all these loops will just do nothing, right? So if, if left is greater, then and we're at some character, like this will just break right away, this will break right away, and this will never execute. So we'll then we'll just we'll just depend an empty array for each iteration, which is what we want. Okay. Oh, we screwed up something here. Mobile money pot monitor, but then now we have some issues. So let's take a look at our code. See what we screwed up. Um. So while if left plus three is lighter. So while left is less than right and length products left, ooh, mistake. So this should actually just be left, right? Because this is just saying that the word is too short, so we don't need to check at index i here. All right, so as you can see, it's really efficient. So um, yeah, let's do the time and space here. But yeah, like I said, for a try, so if this word was reworded into Instead of a search word mouse, let's say you want like a bunch of search words, then you would want to use a try because then you're not like here we're building upon what we have. But if you're building, but if you're searching for specific words and you're just searching for that whole word every time, we are not like doing this repeated work, then you'd want to use a try. And there are problems like that where you have multiple search words and multiple products. So, okay. So the time complexity is going to be, so it's going to be n log n for actually sorting the products and now let's think about the um like how long this would take so like i said this is big o of n this part is big o of n and so yeah so it's actually the sorting is going to be the thing that takes the longest shrinking these is going to be fast because it's going to be a sliding window so that's big o of n okay now as for space did we make anything else so we made a left and a right we made a sort but nothing there this curve chars is only three letters and we're reusing it over and over and over and then if we're not counting our result it's actually big o of one because our result shouldn't be counted in space typically so yeah so we have a really efficient solution hopefully you liked it definitely something different and if you did please like the video and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching